Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to uh, this month's edition of uh, Centerville Business Today. Uh, I'm Mark Kingseed, the mayor of Centerville. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here today with uh, the owner of Busalis Baking, uh, which is a great new store in uh, the Cross Point Shopping Center. Uh, I'm here with Matt Busalis. Matt, great to see you. Glad that you're here with me. I, I appreciate you inviting me into your kitchen. Oh, I'm, I'm glad. I was looking forward to it ever since it got on my camera. Well, I, I took my jacket off, put the apron on. I, I see you got work back here. I don't know what you're going to have me do, but uh, I'm ready. If you come in <clears throat> back here, you got to be ready to work. I, I've, I've cleaned up. I'm ready to go. I, my first job off the farm was working in a pizza hut in Sydney, Ohio. So I actually, it was a little while ago, but I am an experienced kitchen helper though, so huh. you, can, you can put me to work. Well, baking's really hard work, but uh, for, I think one president once said, after he worked on a farm, was it Harry S. Truman? Uh, he said, after he worked on a farm, nothing ever again seemed like work, but baking comes <clears throat> close. I think that's why a lot of farm kids go on to other yeah. things. But. And there's very few <laughs> bakers these days. One thing about our bakery, we're um, kind of a throwback bakery, something like your childhood in that if you went through this bakery, you'd see very pure, very simple ingredients, butter. We don't have any hydrogenated oils, no fry machines, whole grains, whole flours, fresh eggs. Uh, formulas that were popular and tasty uh, 50, 60 years ago that kind of have fallen by the wayside for convenience. But as you can see by my appearance, I do the hard work here. Well, I know you told me that you were up at, what, 5 in the morning? Uh, oh, no, I get in at 3. It's got to so, start at 3. So you obviously have a passion for this. How did you get into the business itself? What, what led you down this, this you line know, of work? Like a lot of things, something just random comes across your path. Uh, there I was in college out in California, and I got a part-time job making donuts early hours. And there was just something, although it was hard to get up, you don't really ever adjust to that. But doing the work in the morning, the peace and the quiet and the solitude, and uh, kind of the sa satisfaction at the end of the day when you've got a beautiful product, even a donut, having it available for customers to take home. And from that point on, it was always something in me, some curiosity. I would look, attend professional workshops while still working in my professional job at the time in corporate finance. So finally, six, seven years ago, I was out here and I wanted to enact on this dream of mine before age and other things closed the door. So I set out to find a location to open a bakery. And I was going to go back uh, to California. I was working here in Dayton at the time. And I realized there were not a lot of scratch bakeries here compared to other cities. So six, almost seven years ago, I opened Busalis Baking. We just, as you know, we did our grand opening with right. you. Right. Uh, we re moved to Centerville. And we're so excited to be here. Well, now tell us a little bit about the products you have and, and what you offer to the customers. Well, um, I'd say our, the sort of the uh, marquee or the, the, the touchstone of our bakery are two things, is our French bread and our croissants. And indeed in um, France, although we do other things besides French baking, but the way they judge a bakery is by the croissant and the French bread. Why? Because there's nowhere to hide. In those two little uh, um, goods, it's all the skill of the baker and the quality of the ingredients that produce the result. There's not a lot of sugars, there's no fruits, nothing that distracts the taste buds. What you're tasting, for instance, in a French bread is just the proper mixing, the proper fermentation, and above all, the proper shaping and care when shaping a French bread. This happens to be a nine grain bread, but it's much the same. Um, there's nothing in it that would distract from the taste other than good, hard work, and doing it properly. Well, how do you learn to cook this way? How do you learn to bake this way? You know, I suppose I got to have to admit I was never formally educated or deeply steeped in baking. I would take classes and indulge in home baking like a lot of people in, in their homes do. Finally, I, I did take a few intensive courses, but it was a baker friend of mine that said, Matt, you'll never know it all, just got to jump in. And I guess that's true with a lot of things in life. Although, jumping in, it's gotten to be sometimes more than what I had bargained for in terms of the workload and commitment it requires and sacrifice with family. But I find it really satisfying. Well, you know, the thing that I find so impressive, I mean, 
you obviously have such a passion for what you do. I mean, it shows up in the, the quality of your products, which I've sampled and are mighty good. Thanks. You walk in the door and just the smell of the, of the fresh baked goods is just overpowering. It's such, a, such an amazing thing. But you obviously put your heart and soul into your business here. It, it's, yeah, and it's more than the product. Um, in this day and age, there's uh, grocery stores that have very good bakeries. Uh, you know, however they obtain the goods, sometimes they buy them from other places. And they ha have a very compelling product. So what we have to provide is something that is also missing in a lot of today's business environment. Just good old customer service. Uh, as proud as, as I am of our product, if you go on the review sites, equally um, a source of pride is the remarks that people make, the connection we have. People come in and it's a rare opportunity to actually talk to, you can see Mindy across the way, the person that made the scones, she can answer any question or myself, or my staff. We establish not just a one-time customer visit, but we want to have a long-term relationship with them. And that's one of the benefits of a small business that really cares about the customers that come in. You, you, know, you, you, you focus, I think, on the, the relationship that you build with the customers, and of course the word of mouth goes out and everything, because you're doing it right. You're paying attention to what people care about, uh, and, and, you know, it makes them want to come back. Thanks. You know, it, it's a slow grind that way, but I'm convinced it's the best way. As a small business, uh, the resources available to us aren't like what, say, a national train would have in terms of marketing. So for me to just add my little small voice in terms of TV advertising or print advertising, it wouldn't resonate very loud. I'd rather prefer to have a customer like you come in be really elated and say to their friends and family, boy, I was at this great place, Busalis Baking, and it works that way. Now, what from the customer base, what are like the biggest sellers in terms of the products? Is there, is there one, uh, one product, a group of products that really are just flying off the shelf? It, it goes in spurts. Today, we had one product that we don't, do not do every day. It's called Queen Amon. And we thought today to change the name or give it a nickname, OMG, because it's so incredible that as soon as it goes into a person's mouth, they sample it, automatically their, boy, their reaction is, oh my God. It's a croissant and it's laden with salted butter. Most of our croissants are unsalted butter, so it has a little bit of savoryness to it. But then while we fold the dough, that's what cr laminating a, a croissant or folding it requires, we start sprinkling in a little bit of sugar. So at the end, it's a very tedious process. You have this rich, buttery product that is salty a little bit and sweet, caramely, and so soft with the butter in the middle. Um, I say, because today I made 70 of them at about 9 a.m. And an hour ago, a person bought the last five. So in about two and a half hours, we sold seven. Fantastic. So Queen Amon, but our croissants, in, our mo in the morning, our scones are the most popular. We mix those by hand. My uh, gal Mindy always says, uh, when I, can I start using a mixer? But she does them all by hand because we do not want that gluten to develop. So we use pure cream and very simple ingredients, very clean taste, and the quality shows. Well, I, wanted, I know that you had mentioned earlier when we were off camera that you've got a, <clears throat> an oven, which is unusual that you're proud of. Let's, let's take a look at that. Yeah, it's really something. Okay, okay. thanks. Well, we're here at the, uh, the French Deck Oven. Matt, tell right. us about this. Well, as we were talking over there, um, it's not a big bakery, but uh, one thing with a bakery, when something gets set in motion, you gotta stay on it. So we had to come over here, and we're gonna quickly load our French bread. And we're lucky to have a French deck oven available to us. When you want to make European breads, and by that, I guess I mean breads with a good crust and yet a soft interior, you need a deck oven that has steam. The, the, uh, this is a, a deck oven. It's a synthetic surface that mimics a stone surface. It's very hot, probably uh, we bake at about 500 degrees. We slide our breads in, as you'll demonstrate. I'm going to put you to work. Okay. And we use a little steam, and the steam has an important effect for bread. Uh, I'm just going to press this button here. I'm usually on that side. And I don't know if steam is going into the deck. And what happens is when the bread goes in, the steam globs onto the bread and prevents the 
crust from forming too fast because when it's in the oven, that yeast is still alive for about maybe 15 minutes. So the steam prevents the crust from forming and you get what they call a nice bloom and you'll see it on the inside of a loaf. So let's go ahead and put these uh, gently onto our loader. Uh, we use that for our baguettes. Put that back. Oh, one thing I wanted to show you, Mayor, is if you can see the quality of our breads, you see this nice cream color? Right. That's really an artisan way to mix breads. We mix our breads very, very little, only about three minutes. And we let time, we give our breads about 15 hours of fermentation so that the gluten can form naturally and slowly. To overmix, you'll see a lot of supermarket uh, breads have a white interior and you can see, I'll show that to the people at home, how ours has this cream. We have nothing in there but the flour, a little bit of yeast, salt, and of course uh, water. And yet we get this result. It's just allowing nature to do the, as much work rather than mixing. Shortcuts are really never very good, and we try and uh, stay away from them. And you're doing, you're mixing most of this by hand, or all of it by hand? Uh, well, for the breads, we use a machine. Okay. But uh, all the shaping we do by hand, and that's a good point. It enables us to uh, mix the dough very delicately. A lot of uh, store breads, uh, the, the bigger stores, they have to mix their doughs really tough so that way it can stand up to all the machine molding. We do the hand molding, uh, so the dough, that's the big difference for us. Okay. Why don't you put that last one on? That way you washed your hands, I saw you. I did indeed. Just dump it upside down. So I can see the little uh, <clears throat> comfort you have. Yeah, the hesitancy of it, but. Uh... And then we're just gonna score these real quickly. I want you to do a couple. Every baker has, no matter what, it seems like their own signature. As simple as this is, it seems like every hand will do it differently. Now, what is what is that accomplished by doing this? That? Tells the bread when it goes into the oven. I mentioned how it'll bloom. Right. It tells the bread where to break. It's going to want to break through the crust. Very good. Just okay. don't fight the dough. Now let the whole knife go right through. Just slide across, real easy. Okay. Almost that just the, the weight of the, there you go. There you go, you're a good learner. It comes, uh, it comes back, it's been a while. You want a second job? Uh, no, <laughs> but thank you. I'm always looking for bakers. <clears throat> it, is, it is tempting. Okay, now we're just gonna quickly put a little steam in the oven, a little more steam. And you're gonna go right up to the eyeballs of the viewers, you're gonna back up. I would like you to just, I'll guide you through it. Okay. Got it. Okay, and then just, Put your shoulders, okay. the hand shoulder width, and be firm, you cannot break it. Good, you got a little caught, that's all right. Then we're gonna okay. pull this back, and in about 35, 40 minutes, we're gonna have the best tasting bread that's around. That's fantastic, that's fantastic. Well, all right, <clears throat> I uh, think we're kind of wrapping up on time. Matt, very nice, uh, appreciate the opportunity. Ladies and gentlemen, please come on down to Salas Baking. It's in the front part of Cross Point Shopping Center. Uh, that's going to wrap up. That's all the time we have uh, for this month's edition of Centerville Business Today. This is Mayor Mark Kingseed saying thanks for dropping in. Come on down and get some great food. Take care. <laughs>